Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast, and we are back season two with another episode. And today, Private Talk, we have the privilege of having Masika Kalisha on the couch. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming on Private Talk. We're excited to talk to you. We're excited to get to know you a little bit better. And yeah, all the things. Awesome. You said my name better than some of my family members, I just want to say. Thank you. I feel like I have like this phone sex operated voice the same time it comes on. It just yeah. like rolls off the tongue. We just like, I like it. keep on rocking with it. I like it. <laughs> so thank you for coming on the, the podcast. And uh, tell a private talk a little about you. You do music. You're an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. You're an actress. Like you kind of do it all. Yeah. It's like et cetera, et cetera. So I like to call myself a mom entrepreneur. Oh, I like that. Because mom always comes first. But um, I'm a singer, I'm an actress. Well, you know, today it's actor because it's, you know, gender um, neutral, I guess. There you go. Um, I'm a writer, um, uh, reality TV personality, business owner. Um, I own Kari Barbie Beauty, which is a cosmetic line that I'm wearing today. Um, we have cosmetics, um, clothing, and hair products that I make from scratch. Hair oils is the best um, in the cool. world. And I just recently launched my new company, Stock Market Tips from a Bad Bitch. And I am teaching stock market tips, and I have a workbook slash planner that is selling off the shelves right now, teaching all the bad bitches and, you know, guys, we don't discriminate, um, how to invest your money. So That's awesome. We're yeah. going to get to get in all those little things. I went to the little surface wise, but we definitely right. you jump down into all those things. You're a very busy lady. Man. So again. Booked and busy. Know, <laughs> yes. That's always a good thing. How did you get into the entertainment business? Well, um, I kind of. all start? I kind of started off as a kid. Uh, my parents uh, had me, me, my brother, and my sister in the agency. Um, I went on some auditions and stuff like that very early on, but I was really shy, believe it or not. No one believes that. Um, so I really didn't, I enjoyed like acting and I enjoyed, you know, reading my lines, but I didn't really like talking to people. So my parents, you know, they didn't force me to stay in it or, or my siblings that gave us a choice, which, you know, I'm glad that they did, but I kind of wish they were, would have pushed Push a little more. more. Um, so, you know, I used to just sing and write songs at home and, you know, join the local talent shows and stuff like that. So, um, when I w got out of high school, I was um, working three jobs to put myself through college and, you know, pay tuition. And I saw, like, um, an ad somewhere. I think, what was it? Like, what it, whatever was, like, the equivalent to Craigslist at that time. It was, like, Mandy.com. I don't, I don't remember what it was. Um, but it was for, they were looking for extras for ATL, the movie. So I was like, oh, okay, I have a day off. I was waitressing at Gladys Knight's Chicken and Waffles. So I was going to go down there on my day off. So, you know, I went to be an extra. And when I get to set... Chris Robinson was a director, and there was, like, a line of girls, like, just standing in line, and he was on a dolly, and someone was pushing him down the dolly, and he was just sitting there like this, just being pushed down the yeah, dolly. Yeah, all out. Right, and they were like, get, go to the end of the line. I'm like, for what? Like, I had never been on a set before. So I go to the end of the line, he's like, you. All right, take her to the dressing room. I'm like, okay. So he's like, let's go. I'm like, where are we going? Um, and they had uh, hair and makeup now with some, some prime names that are still in the industry. Um, season four of Insecure, the same... Um, wardrobe stylist that was on that set in 2005 is also working on the Insecure set. So it's, it's really cool how everything comes full world. circle. Right. Yeah. And that was back in Atlanta. So super long story short, um, they moved me up to a featured extra. I had no idea what that meant. Um, I played big boy silent girlfriend. I had to kiss him. It was my first time ever on camera in front of a crowd full of people. How was that for you? Was that like intimidating? Was it, it was just natural? No, it is now, <laughs> yeah. but it was so awkward because I didn't even know, they didn't give me any direction. I didn't know what I was doing. They just changed my hair, my makeup, my clothes, and then sent me out there like action. I was like, wait, what am I doing? And Chris was like, no one briefed her. Tell her what she's doing. So big boy walks in and like, he's smoking a cigar. He's drinking Hennessy. And then I just had to just kiss him. And I was, I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. But not that he's terrible, but it was, you know. It's I, like movie magic. You go from, like, scene, and then you're just like, let's make out. Right. Like, there's no in between. There's no lead up. You're not really playing. You know, exactly. That whole thing. So you're just like, I have uh, to kiss a stranger. Uh, right. And on the first time, everyone's going to look at me. It was crazy. Am I doing it right? Am right. I doing right. It right. Like, yeah. um, I was every bit of 18. So um, after a couple, you know, takes, I, I wasn't shy anymore. And, um, you know, they were nice enough How to. How many takes did it take? I don't remember. I think, like, <laughs> I only remember, like, the crowd and, like, feeling so awkward. Yeah. Um, and then they're like, oh, let's do it again. And you like, can can you to kiss like ten times in a row? They're like, no, was, one more time. It was at least five times, <laughs> okay. at least, because uh, they ha kept having to touch up my lipstick, and I was like, this is so this is how it works. Like, you know, at this point, I'm thinking they just shoot a movie. I'm not realizing how many angles and the over your shoulder, like, what it all kind of like. Right. So um, I ended up working on that set the whole summer as like a stand-in um, for one of the the lead girls. And again, I knew I didn't know what anything meant. So 
I was working, I actually ended up making like more money there than I was waitressing um, and ended up having to, to quit my job. So I met a lot of people that said, I met um, Jazzy Faye, I met Will Packard, I met T.I., I met, you know, some, some of everybody. And um, Jazzy is now my daughter's godfather. He's like my uncle slash brother. Um, and I met a lot of casting directors. So literally the day we wrapped, I got casted um, for Big Tigger's Kittens, which was big back then. It was like all the girls wanted to be in it. So I flew to uh, Miami to shoot that. And I, you know, went and paid $80 for a fake ID so I could go out. And we're going to Wet Willie's. Rebel. Listen. <laughs> we're going to Wet Willie's and I give him my fake ID and he's like, okay, this is fake. I'm, I'm going to let you in, but I'm going to take your ID. It's not fake. I'm telling you right now, I know it's fake. I'm going to confiscate it, but I'm going to let you in. It's not fake. He's like, if you don't give it to me, nobody's coming in. You're like, in. be grateful. Just get inside. Right. So I'm like, it's not fake. He kicked all of us out. Big ticket, all the models, all the press. So we all had to leave. Um, but so we did that shoot. And then I ended up doing a shoot at the Clevelander, not knowing it, we were doing swim, a swimming pool shoot. I didn't know that the pool was in the middle of the bar. And then they just literally, it was a pack that night. And they just threw me in a swimsuit and put me in the middle of the bar in front of everybody. So my first like two big experiences, I was just kind of thrown oh, in in front of a crowd of people, and it was like, okay, perform or die. So I think those two experiences just kind of took all the shine it's like out of it. Like fight or flight kind of thing. Exactly, it's just a natural thing. You just sat and you came into your own. Exactly. So <laughs> when I went back to Atlanta, I you know all the casting directors started calling me for like videos. I did a Trillville video. I did a Ti video. I did a Nelly video. That like started your like the boom of your video. Like, yeah. In, like career. Yeah. And back then, girls were getting paid because you know this was like the LimeWire age. So this was yeah. <laughs> before oh, streaming yeah. and like you know bootlegging. So we were getting like fifteen hundred to three thousand a day. So you know I do three, four, five music videos in a month. I'm doing good. Yeah. Then, you know, came the magazines and then the hostings. So I started off um, doing more urban work. Um, somewhere in there, I ended up doing um, a small movie role in Three Can Play That Game. Um, I did, like, you know, just got, got an agency and just started working from there and um, basically worked my way until I was ready to move to L.A. That's awesome. Congrats. Thank you. Hustle. You know what yeah. I mean? You gotta, like, especially back then, it's like you kind of... You have, you know, agents and things like that, but you got to, like, you know, do it at all yourself. Like, you're your own, yeah. like, promotion. That's why it's, like, yeah. the fight or flight. It's, like, um, this is the one time it's going to do it, and, you know, you And we didn't up, have Instagram up. or, you know, YouTube or all that stuff wasn't big like it is now. It's super easy it's, like, to just easier blow. to kind of put, you, yeah. put yourself on a, you know, pedestal of sorts. Right. You really had to, you really had to work. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I heard about your you. write-up on Forbes, too. Yes. How was that? That's oh, an amazing my feeling, God. I'm sure. It was incredible. Like, I mean, when when the ad, when my publicist sent it to me, like your ads up. I mean, your ad, your write ups up. I I knew it was coming, but still, like, I just started screaming. Me and my assistant were at my house. We just started running around the house screaming like crazy persons because, like, that has to feel like such a you know a big accomplishment. Yes. You know, you all this hard work from from starting from back you know in ATL and all these things. Like knowing now to where you are now as a woman. Exactly. You know, I've been there so much in the industry. You know, didn't even mention this part, but I, I had a record deal when I was eighteen, and I didn't know anything about anything. It was Terrible deal, terrible situation. The, you know, um, CEO of the label was a piece of, can I curse? Yes, you can. He was a piece of shit, like dog shit, like mm -hmm. trash. And, um, you know, going through those bad contracts and just literally learning from bad contracts and, you know. Experience, not knowing anything. Exactly. Like, yeah. Learning how to do it the correct way. That's kind of how I built my brand by making mistakes. So, you know, getting to the point where I am now where, you know, now I know exactly what how business needs to be done and contracts and, you know, the difference between, you know, a good team and a bad team, business managers, things like that. And just creating um, my platform now with, you know, promoting financial literacy. And, and is that why do you think that think why you went the route of like the stock market book that you, you have? Um, you know, my fans made me write that. Oh, yeah. I, I had no intentions of doing it. Um, I was just, you know, I, since I got on Love and Hip Hop, um, learning how to do contracts and, you know, just little things like, you know, I, I, I don't get my checks made to myself. I get them made to my company. And whenever I sign a contract, I have them get, give me a loan out form and I sign um, it to my LLC. So all my checks go directly to my LLC, not me. I cut myself a check. I get no taxes taken out. Then we file taxes like four times a year. So it's like one of those things like you being, you know, growing up in the business, you know those things. But someone who's just coming in, you don't right. know that. And exactly. That's, why that's where I was. You like that whole, you know, take advantage of, you know, it's doggy dog world. They're right. like, let's just pay it to me. I'll pay right. you taxes. 
classes later. You right. hear all those things. So is that what kind of like empowered you to kind of steer your fans into the direction yes. that they're going into? So nobody told me any of these things. Like I said, I had to learn the hard way. So basically, I wish that somebody would have told me. So when I, you know, as I would find out things, I would tweet about it or post it on Instagram, you know, teaching people like credit tips and things like that because no one told me. Told you, yeah. So and you would think now that you should have learned that in school. Hello? And nobody teaches you that because they don't want you to get ahead. When's the last time you needed to know the score of pie? Not anytime soon. Any- <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever used the Dewey Decimal Probably System? Probably not. <laughs> you know, most, well, I can't speak for everybody, but in my situation and most people that I grew up with, the first time you learned about credit is when you didn't pay your credit card bill. and then You got you could, something taken away where it's like negative. The first time I learned about importance of paying bills when I got an eviction notice. You know, and it's like, we don't learn these skills in school. Half the things we learn in school, you'll never use, ever. So, um, you know, it was just really important for me to start learn, teaching those things. So uh, my daughter's father had introduced me to the stock market, and I knew nothing about it. He was trying to explain it to me, but, like, he was so well-versed in it at the time that I had no idea what he was talking about. It's like a different language. Yeah, like, mo- that's the problem. Most people start at their level of understanding. So if I know algebra, I can't teach my daughter how to add until I teach her how to count. Mm-hmm. So people will go straight into steps. Ex- yeah. equations like, whoa, I'm trying to learn one through 10. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know what he was talking about. He was like, okay, it's a lot. Basically get a financial advisor. Cool. So I did that for four years and like, I didn't have much of a return. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to learn myself like right before the pandemic hit, but I was just so busy. When the pandemic hit, I was like, okay, I'm stuck at home. Let me dive into this. Within four weeks of me, like, you know, just learning on my own and trying it out, my ROI was bigger in those four weeks than it was in the four years that I had had advisors at Morgan Stanley and J.P. Morgan. So I was like, okay, I'm on to something. Yeah. So, you know, I just kind of, like, started tweeting things, and then, like, people were really appreciative of it, but then they got real aggressive, and they were like, you need to look at my portfolio, and can you trade for me, and, you know, I'll give You're you a like, percent. this is taking my time. Right. Like, like first of all, I don't work for you. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, um, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a a broker. I'm none of that. I'm just giving you free tips, people. Mm -hmm. What works for me. Exactly. So, you know, it got to the point where, like, people would literally, like, ask me a question. And I would say, like, scroll down my timeline. I answered this question a couple weeks ago. Then it just gets redundant. I'm not doing that. No, you can't just tell me. Absolutely not. Sorry, (laughs) I don't work for you. If you won't scroll to do the work, then don't, like, I'm busy. So I I literally tweeted one day, I'm not doing this anymore. Y'all ungrateful. And then I had a slew of people like saying, no, there's people that really want to learn. Can you make a, a stock club? We'll pay. Can you write a book? We'll pay. So I made a private stock club and that was cool, but people still had a lot of questions and I still really didn't have time to go through the basics. So I literally just took my notes that I was like writing as I was learning and turned it into a workbook slash planner. The way I learn, I can't just sit and read a book. I can read a page five times and not tell you a word on it because my attention span. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I... I have to do like read, research, apply, see what happens, learn from that. So that's kind of how I made the workbook. And then, yeah. yeah. And then the back of it. You're like seeing it as you're learning it and then doing the whole full circle. Yeah, exactly. And then the, the, the second half of the book is like a day planner and a week planner, but it's a stock market planner. It's something I've never seen that I completely made up that I wish someone, you know, would have, would have gave me and formulated for me. And it's just, it's very unique. So, um, to see like Forbes, like a huge oh, national name like that, that is, you know, specifically for business and finances, acknowledge a black woman from Chicago, a single mom, you know, who we get back stigma in this industry, you know, coming from reality TV, we're not supposed to know anything, we're not supposed to have anything. And not only did they, you know, acknowledge Kari Barbie Beauty and stock market tips from a bad bitch, but it was a gorgeous write up. They yeah. wanted to tremendous detail about you know what I was trying to do in the book and everything it was probably one of the most well written interviews I've ever done so that's amazing yeah it was just it was incredible when it comes like when you it's kind of like you know all your hard work pays off you know you don't do it for something like that but when you do it's like it's just as bad it's just it's awesome yeah cool feeling so my next goal is to make the Forbes list hello there you go girl there you (laughs) go keep those going so what would you tell somebody who has no experience with stock markets at all what one tip if you could say out of your you know advice what would you give um the I would say the very the the absolute most important thing that that I found out later, <laughs> um, you have to have a conversational understanding of every single word that you come across when it comes to trading, investing, options, for forex, whatever it is. Um, that is the difference between getting rich and going broke. 
a lot of the words that we see, they're lay terms. We all know what they mean. We know what options means. We know what a limit is. We know what stop means. But when you put that together, you're trading options with a, with a limit price and a stop price. It means something totally different. And if you don't understand what that means, then you're going to lose your money. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of times, okay, I will, if you, let's say you look up limit order and, it, and you find out what that means. In that definition, there might be two words you don't understand. So they need to look up those two words. And those two words, there might be three words you don't understand. So you need to look up those three words. So it becomes like a family tree of definitions, but you have to understand all of those in order to get back here. Mm -hmm. And why that's so, if you skip all this, you go broke. So before I really understood that, you know, I I won some, I lost some, but then once I really got into the definitions, which is very tedious, but when you see those returns, you're going to be like, let me read these. I'm going to sit here a little bit longer. I would, I literally, when I was writing this book, when I was learning, teaching myself, I would stay up to the wee hours of the night, like, I would put my daughter to bed. I would like gra- grab a glass of wine, maybe wind down for a little bit. And then I would literally just get online, start researching different Instagram pages, different websites, different, you know, I have my, just going through and just learning. I was piecing together things that I saw and putting it together to make it make sense. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the stock market opens at 930 on the East Coast, which is 630 a.m. here. So I will be up to four or five in the morning sometimes. And then I'm like, well, shoot, let me just stay up for the market open. So there was times where I didn't even go to sleep, mm. you know, dedication. I was, I was, when I saw that money, yeah. <laughs> I think my first big return, um, I did, a, I traded an option for, I think I put $2,010 in and in six days I made $57,000. Wow. I was like, this is worth staying up for. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> and, and, since and that's the thing is like, you know, the, all those things, like you're saying, it's like, it's so tedious that people just stop. And that's why people want to be, years. you know, successful in it or not, you know, because it's exactly. limit, like knowing the limit thing. But that's really cool that you're putting something together for people to, yeah. be, you know, learn those success things the way that you have and yeah. you put that out there. Yeah, I think it's just really important. Like you said, we don't learn this stuff in school. For sure. You know, and they should change that. They really need to. And, and I definitely would like to figure out a way to make that happen. Yeah. But, you know, as as especially women in, in this industry, like we have a platform, we have an influence. And I don't really see too many people in the position that I'm in trying to help other people. Like, yeah, I want you to buy my music. Of course, I want you to buy my products. Because people, I feel like, also don't take women as serious as men Absolutely. do. And, you know, and that needs to change. It's like, and I feel like knowledge is power. And, the, and you know, even when I, I like my podcast, it's like I like educating people and getting to know people and knowing what they're doing and, you know, in their lives and, like, learning that part of it. And yeah, it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, we wouldn't know unless we have a conversation about it. And you get, you know, Absolutely. And, you know part of it, a private conversation where it's like, Yes, everybody's listening, but it's like, you know, two people that right. wouldn't normally probably be sitting down in conversation and learning way more about each other. Exactly. Like I'm sure, different. like, if someone just walked by, they would probably think that we're talking about bubblegum and unicorns, <laughs> <laughs> which we can still talk about. I do like unicorns. <laughs> so let's talk about Kari Barbie or Kari Barbie Beauty. Yes. So Kari Barbie Beauty is my cosmetic line. I am wearing now. Um, I'm wearing actually three different colors mixed together on okay. my lips today. So is it a full line? Is it just eyeshadows? What it was all in in the in the line? We are expanding to a full line right now. It's like half. So we we launched with um, lip products. Mm-hmm. Added some more lip products. Um, that's the silver collection was the first collection. That's um, all lip products. Then we added the pearl collection to that, which is like the iridescent lip glosses. Um, and then we added the rose gold collection, which is our illuminators, highlighters, body bronzers, all the shimmery, the bronzies, lotions, things like that. Um, we are adding our eyeshadow palettes and like eyebrow kits next. Um, and eventually we'll have like the full line of everything. But um, I'm doing it in stages and each collection is named after a different precious metal or jewel, um, something like that. We are paraben free, cruelty free um, and vegan. Um, my hair oils are all organic and basically I, the goal for me was to have minimalist ingredients, um, but still not lose any integrity or quality. Um, what made you start doing these things? Is it because of your daughter and doing and wanting to use better products for her or yeah. how is that? Yeah. So when I was on reality TV, you know, we get our makeup done every freaking day pretty much. And then, you know, red carpets or, you know, filming commercials, whatever you're in makeup all day long. So one is not good for your skin anyway. But, you know, the the main thing we had to do on every set is touch up your lips. Touch up your lips. All day long, you're touching up your lips. So when I got pregnant with my daughter, I was like, okay, I know I'm going to be in glam breastfeeding. I know she's going to be in my lap. You know, I know I'm going to be kissing her. I don't want to kiss her and have to have lipstick on her skin. And I don't know what these products are. So the very first product that we formulated was our matte liquid lip gloss that stays on all day without having to reapply and without drying out your lips. It's actually... 
it dries, but it's very moisturizing. So I wanted to make sure that it was, you know, the integrity was good for the, for the consumer, um, as well as I can kiss my daughter, and one, it's not going to rub off yeah. on her. Two, I'm a busy mom. I don't and have we need, time. We need good lips. Okay. And then especially <laughs> now with these masks. Yeah. Oh, throw on your mat, and you don't even have to it's reapply. Yeah, nice. I have a lot of nurses that, um, you know, would order the, the lipstick, and they would take off their mask and, like, take a picture of it. They would have foundation and stuff, but no lipstick, the and lipstick. their lipstick's to be on. Nice. So, it's like you know, your own infomercial. Exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then we have a product that lasts that long. You know, it, it's an $18 tube of lipstick. You don't want to have to buy a new one every three months. Like, literally, it, it will last you a year or plus um, because you don't have to apply that much. So the main reason, again, was... Um, convenience, time saving, and you know, to make sure I'm not giving my daughter any rashes or anything like that. So, of course, my daughter's name is Kari Barbie, so I named it um, after her. Yeah, that's sweet. I like that. Thank you. Giving back. Yeah, kind of you know what I mean. That's for her. <laughs> so, how was your uh, experience on Love and Hip Hop? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm grateful for the platform. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, I don't know if I would be in in this p position without it so I never want to be like oh I hate the show and you know but it definitely wasn't what I thought it was it was absolutely nothing that they told me it would be mm -hmm. um it was a setup <laughs> you know but at the end of the day everybody has a job to do um so I got in and got on what do you think is one misconception about you that the show kind of portrayed one <laughs> You can listen them all. <laughs> uh, everything. Yeah. Um, so you, know, you think it was just completely just... Uh, oh, gosh, it was a joke. You know, basically, we, we don't know where we're going. We don't know where we're going to film. They don't let you drive. They pick you up. Um, they don't give you the address. You get a call sheet that gives you a general idea of what to wear. Like, dress as if you're going to dinner with friends. Mm -hmm. um, you're not allowed to talk to any of the other cast members. You're not supposed to exchange numbers. They don't want you texting or talking about anything. You don't know who's going to be there. Um, when you get to set, there, a producer comes in and takes your phone. It's craziness. Then they brief you. Okay, today you'll be filming with this person, that person. We need you to talk about these three points. So, like, you, they don't tell you what to say. But they push you in the right direction. And they, they give you an outline. Should. Okay. Like, you got to write the paper, but they give you an outline. Yeah. So, let's say, um, and then you may or may not know the person that you're filming with, but you got to act like you give it, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's how they incited a lot of drama, too. Because let's say we don't know each other at yeah. all, right? And But we have mutual acquaintances, so it, it makes sense that we would meet or something. So, this could be our first time meeting. And they, let's say you and your boyfriend just broke up, and I have no idea. And your boyfriend uh, is a producer that I work with. And let's say we're in the studio um, till like 4, 4 a.m. And they want me to bring up the, oh, this, this producer I'm working with that I was in the studio with all night. Mm. And tell her, tell her how he was flirting with like you. It's like misleading. But I have, like, I have no yeah. idea that he's your boyfriend. So maybe you say like, oh, yeah, I'm in music. I'm like, oh, wow, that's. Now I know my, I have a cue. When you talk about music, I have to talk about the session. Mm. Like, oh, that's crazy, girl. You know, I needed a girlfriend to come to the studio with me. I was going to stay with this producer. Tommy, girl, he we trying to work. He flirting all night. Yeah. And you, now you're like, wait, Tommy Smith? And I'm like, yeah. You're like, my man? I'm like, ooh. So, like, the, they, yeah, creating. So they'll yeah. drop little things that we, like, and now you're thinking, like, did she say that on purpose? So you don't know if, if I'm trying to jab you or if they set me up. Yeah. But by the time the scene is said and done, it doesn't matter because now you're just like, oh, who this bitch is it? You and know? now we're telling everybody? Right. So, <laughs> so then there might be a, 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 a Q word, like, uh, oh yeah, girl. Well, the studio's called the Dungeon. When you say the Dungeon, that's like the Jack in the Box. <laughs> and then the big surprise. And then all Tommy's side chicks come up. Oh, the bitch, 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 bitch. I, uh, uh. Now she so was extra. It always a setup like as this detailed before you know when you first started, or did it like grab like did it gradually get more? It was always something. Yeah. Now, now a, a random person didn't pop up in every episode, yeah. but they definitely set but there something was a treatment up to like what was the formula of what was going to cause chaos for the world to see. Even if you don't know it, then three weeks later you're like oh, okay, so you know they just they they created fake situations. Or took real situations and turned them fake because let's say me and you are friends, mm -hmm. but we we've never been to this place they took us. We don't hang with any of the people that they have us with, and maybe maybe we're, you're doing a launch party for a new product you have. They're gonna ruin the, so they're gonna take a real situation and make it fake, script it, ruin it. Like I did a launch party for Kari Barbie Beauty. I had beautiful displays, gorgeous setup that I really use for my parties. They took all of it down because it was poly uh, uh, plexiglass and it could be a weapon. So they made made they set up all my products just standing 
lipstick standing on the table to look ghetto. Mm. I like I had a gorgeous pre- setup, yeah. right. So now not not only did you now I look unprofessional. I look ghetto. Yeah. Then in the middle of my launch party, you have people coming and throwing and stuff, jumping on tables. So it's like they take real situations and mess them up, and they put you in fake situations that end up becoming real because now you're trapped in this storyline. Sounds toxic. It it it, it, it is worse really than a toxic boyfriend. <laughs> Um, you know, and then you really don't know exactly how the edit's going to come out until it comes on. Mm-hmm. And then you can't really s- deny, like, what happened. You can't go against your contract and be like, that's not real. That really didn't happen. So you just kind of like, it, as it the show's airing, you're filming. So you're like, this bitch said this about me. So now you go back into film. Now you want to say something about her. Yeah. It, it's, like tip for tat after that? It was just the most, like, ignorant web of lies. And my real life is very interesting. I understand that they have to script to a certain extent, but I'm like, if you let people film their real shit, like I'm sure it would still be salacious and interesting, but Hey, I'm not a producer of that show for a reason. So kudos to them. I got the fuck on. Peace. So what is your um, idea? What is your feelings on mainstream media? Um, in general, like in general. you're talking about the news, social media, um, just in general with you, like what you have going on with the world, the stuff going on in the world too, like in both aspects. I mean, it's a gift and a curse. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of times it gets very toxic and it can be very dangerous, especially, you know, for young people or people that aren't used to being like in the spot, like, like you have to have a, a tough skin to do this type of thing. The first four weeks I was on Love and Hip Hop, I was like, oh my God, why are people saying this about me? Why would they think this? Oh, they really believe this. And it was really hurtful. By week five, when the checks started rolling, I was like, fuck that, keep going. Yeah. You know, but like I have had some of the absolute worst things said to me by perfect strangers that, you know, if they were ever in the opportunity to be in my presence, they would ask for a photo. You know, so it's like you have to, you have to be tough. You know, people have committed suicide because of online bullying. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I remember when swine flu was a big thing and I actually had it. And, I remember it coming and going. Now, I don't want to sound crazy, but I feel like the reason COVID has stayed around so long is because of social media. Like, it's it's not just the virus. It's the fear of it. It's the talking about it. You know, all of these things. Before social media was big, things didn't spread like that. You can literally pick up your phone and f- learn anything about anybody, whether it's true or false. Mm-hmm. You know, people can put out a false narrative so fast it goes viral. And people only remember the biggest negative you've done until you've done something so great that it, that it out it surpasses it to them you know i still get introduced as my from love and hip-hop i quit in 2017 it's 2021 i mean i feel you I, with the same thing with me in porn i haven't done porn in four years but i'm always going to be alexis texas you right know, just recently being in the news i was in a music video and it's all because oh i was in porn and i was stripping mind you i have clothes on nothing right being stripped like nothing right. it's just like to the extreme because it's, right. they want to play it to their narrative you know and then so there's always has to be a bad guy exactly what do you think would be like what would you say is your mo- your craziest uh, fan experience oh god because you know you saying that they portrayed you in a different way and people start taking it personal like and you're like man i don't even know you like, right because you're just like this is not real life like right. this is, and this is my life right not yours right you know i've had people like literally cry at my feet like i'm beyonce and i'm like okay this is weird but then you know it freaked me out for a little bit but then i had to realize if i'm in a room with beyonce they're gonna run up to me not beyonce and not because they don't want to run up to beyonce hell i want to run up to beyonce they know that they can't approach beyonce they know that like like, she's such this level of stardom. It's untouchable. That, right. That even if they tried, one, they will probably knock down, body slammed. But me, I'm on reality TV that they think is real, so they feel like they know me, and they feel like they can just walk up on me. Mm-hmm. Like, I've had people okay. walk up like, girl, so so when, when, when uh, this person said that, girl, what? And I'm like, I, like, people will walk up and, like, try to hug you and try to mm-hmm. touch you, and it's like, okay, um, you don't, we, I don't actually know you. Like, relax. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've had anything, like, too, too, too crazy, but... You know, I, I have had, you know, underwear thrown at me, like... Men or women. Um, <laughs> women. Um, you know, I've, I've had people try to, like, break into my building when I was in condos and, you know, stuff like that. But for the most part, it's been fun. Um, you know, most people I meet are cool. But the funniest thing probably is when I'm when I'm walking in the mall or something and people, oh, my God, I love you so much. Please, can you take a picture with me? And they're like, okay, so... um can you unblock me? There was this misunderstanding. <laughs> Girl, get the hell up. And, and it, it never fails. The ones that are talking the most shit when they see you, shit their pants. So are you the queen of the block button? Oh, I'm block Obama. <laughs> I have block parties. <laughs> I'll play. I'm Jenny from the block. Does I'll it like, take a lot to get blocked? Nothing. What is, it, what is a situation that is a blockable situation? You can double tap the wrong comment. You're out of here. 
you, out you're of here. serious with it. I don't play. There. I don't play. And then, you know, my PR team, you know, and I have management team that like, I have like 10 different people that are logged into my page. So they, they all day black, 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 black. Mm, you can you can make the wrong emoji and get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> My block list. Be careful, private talk. If you're over there, you don't give her the wrong emoji. Listen. What's her, what are the top three wrong emojis not to put in the block? It, it depends situation. on what like the comment or the caption is, but what is that? The squiggly face? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> like the side uh, like the side face one or like the one with the weird actually the one, like the, the squiggles the one with the mouth is like <laughs> I mean okay, it just it just depends what it's for in the context of exactly but um, if anybody gives you an eggplant emoji is that okay or is that blocked you know I, that would be weird like why are you giving me that <laughs> maybe they want it they want to throw it at you <sighs> well Mm-hmm. I got eggplant propellant. So. <laughs> Bananas, a yeah. water one, a peach. What? What? <laughs> which ones get thrown at you? Oh my gosh! Uh, the, what was it? What was the thing when Sweetie said what? Um, oh, the ice. I was blue. getting snowflakes <laughs> galore. I get basketballs. Like, oops, my ball fell in your yard. That's funny. You That's know. creative. You know, you at least have to do the creativeness. I'm sure you yeah. see it a lot. But <laughs> yeah, I had a guy. Um, he played for some football team. He sent me a video like of him like. I don't know what the fuck doing what? saying or doing something. <laughs> and I opened I want it. The truth. What is, what can I no, he was, this video was I don't remember. I mean, no, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I do get some some of those that blah and it's like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um but he I don't even think he was saying something, but it was a video of him. May, he either said something in general. Like, hey girl, when are you gonna come over and let me like, you know, wine and dine you. It was something kind of like cheesy like that. Something something like generic. And I read it, but I didn't reply. So then he was like, that's my favorite thing to do, by the way, because I'm like, I want you to feel like you're acknowledged. And the ones who really get their feelings hurt, they'll start having conversations with themselves. And then the real funny ones, which I'm (laughs) sure you get this more than I do, then you'll see like scroll up. They'll be doing it for years. Yes. And then we're like, why haven't you given up? You had a conversation (laughs) with yourself the whole time. And I maybe, and I I think one time I did like with an emoji. And my favorite one to always do is the cartwheel one just to piss people off. Oh, I love that one. (laughs) Because it's just funny. So like, I'll be do that and then like and then i won't say anything i'll just ghost again but like yeah that's, that's my favorite thing. when a guy with a blue check is left on red it's like it's an ego buster you know it's like how dare this <laughs> bitch um so yeah i left on how red. many have you left on red quite a few <laughs> bam because they're so, like they they do the dumbest shit like most guys will like hi like introduce themselves i love you they'll just like love you send a heart yeah or, like no like do something. Speak. Like if you're gonna like, I'm just gonna. Oh, I swoon. He has a blue check. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So the the football player guy, when I left on red, he sent back a message. Oh, I'm so sorry. My assistant sent that to you. That wasn't me. Disregard. Mm. It was a video. What <laughs> <laughs> you mean? You're like mean. you know. I can still scroll up right and it's see right there. it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. What's the craziest DM from like a guy that you were that you like saw or something, and you're like, hmm, that's creative, but you still left it on red. <laughs> mm, craziest one. Let's see. Like, do people be offering you things? Or, like, oh, yeah. buying you stuff? But some people, you say that you get that, and it's like it's a lie. Like, you know, they just want right. to bait you. But like, I want to know the ones that are just like you know that you know is a real deal. <laughs> um, I've like, had guys literally like, I mean, I, I had. The dumbest shit, like, um, I want to I wanna eat your ass with duck feathers and bathe you in molasses. And how do you and, want to, I mean, how, who, blah! like, I mean, I'm like, how? And like, I mean, it's stuff like, you, wait, how did you even come up with that? Like, oh, I, I want to feed like you hot be- Cheetos while, wait. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the back of an elephant while a giraffe caresses. Uh, what in the fuck? Oh, I, I, I did have a guy say, I love you. So much, um, fly me out so I can spoil you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like first class? <laughs> Guys are really like bossy. Like, I mean, I give you credit, but uh, no. Like, <laughs> and th- I think the most common one I get are people send me like these requests for money, and then like I can prove it. I'll send you the bill. I don't give a. I don't want to see your. Ah, oh, that's funny. Yeah, you be cash app in these hoes. <laughs> I, I just wonder if for every DM they you begged for, if you put a resume in somewhere for every DM you begged for, you probably need to be DMing. <laughs> it's like it's persistence. You know what I mean? They want to keep on going. Yeah, and I used to ignore they'll it. Really, they'll really do it. But when they ask me for money now, um, I'll have like you know whoever 
was checking my DMs. They'll reply with a link to my book. You need money? Here you go. Here you I'll go. I'll teach you how to make that's them. That's smart, though. That's good. You know, like marketing. I'll I like teach that. You. Marketing genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are crazy with it. Like, I'm like, no, I would never send you money. Like, and, you know, I've done things like I have, like, I've had people like, I don't have any money for my kids. I'm in a hotel. And I've literally like, okay, get their address, find out how many kids, I've like Instacarted them groceries. Yeah. I got um, this single mom, like a hotel. She had like five kids, nowhere to go. She was pregnant. You know, I got her a hotel for like a month. Um, there was a girl like saying, pray for me. You know, I need, I, I haven't eat, ate in two weeks. I'm at the library applying for jobs. And she lived in Atlanta. I had some friends in Atlanta that owned restaurants. I got her an interview. I paid for her, you know, pay for her food when she got to the restaurant. So I have done, you know, things Access like I had a mom, like yeah. I don't have money for diapers. What's your address? Send her a uh, package of diapers. I've done things but like that. But that's more because that's like, you know, that's the meaningful part. Not just right. some scumbag douche boy who's trying to like slide in and be just like, right. oh, she won't know. I'm right. just going to make it. And then I don't send money. I don't know you. I don't know what your motives are. You could be a scammer. Like my just thing is like, what in, like, in the mindset of them? Like, what do you really think about that reply? Like, what are you hoping for? That's what I always want to know. I'm like, how did Ooh. you think that was going to go? And then go? I, in my mind, I'm like, where was that one girl that probably did it? I'm like, you fucked them up <laughs> for everybody because who did that? This The same it's, thing with like when guys are hitting on you when you're driving and they're like, hey, roll your window down. Okay. And then I'm like, I don't know. And first when I lived, when I first came to LA, I definitely did it. I'm like, oh, what? I'm from right. Texas. Like, I don't know anything. Cute. So it may be, they're like stopping me, right? Then they're like, oh, do you have, like, are you married? And I'm like, yeah, I yeah. am. They're like, well, it's okay. Like, I still want to talk to you. I'm like, oh, no, like, this is rude. And then it would happen all the time. So I was like, who made that question while you're driving in California? Hey, are you married? Okay. And if you say no, <laughs> if you say no or yes, they still want to follow you. And I'm Literally. like, this is crazy. I watch too much Dateline to be <laughs> fucking with any of this shit. I'm like, no. I, I go to sleep <laughs> to the ID channel. I do it's too, stupid. but I had to actually <laughs> stop for a while because I'm like, damn, I live alone. My dogs, you know, they'll fuck someone up, but I'm fucked up. Like, it just mentally, you're just like, how do you trust anybody? Like, I look it's at hard. everybody's side eye like, mm, and it's you so, could be it's that so one. that you, you know have to do that. It's true, but that's why with all the crazy shit going on in the world, like, it made it even more apparent. Like, not that I trusted anybody prior to. Right. But, you know, you, you just, you're a little bit more hesitant. And then being a female and, you know, being recognizable, it's really difficult to live your life um, um, with no blind with no blinders on because it's like you have to be cautious exactly you know what I mean? like it's it's you, know, you never know anyone's motives like I've literally okay. had you know a guy like hit on me and and all the stuff like I was I was in Vegas for my friend's birthday this was like in February and um we were sitting at the bar and this guy walks up and he's like you know I want to buy you a drink and I was like no thank you oh you turned down the drink it's like sweetie I get offended I'm, I'm, I'm not thirsty oh uh, who are you here with my girlfriends can I get around for all your girlfriends it's like, uh, they're like, yeah, okay. I was like, all right, we can take a birthday shot. Cool. So he, he gets around for everybody, and then, like, he, he sat down next to me. So cool. Then he takes out his phone, and he's like, yeah, sitting at the bar, and, and, and like, turns, oh, turns yeah. to me. And I was like, ah, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Yeah, I'd have a big and I was problem. And like, I was like, delete that right now. He's like, I ain't posted. I was like, yes, you did. Delete that right like, now. You're actually live, asshole. I'm not fucking like. <laughs> right. And he was like, I, I was like, okay, you about to piss me off. Give me your phone or delete it right now in my yeah. face. What I, you ain't nobody. Like, I, who, are, who are you? Who are you? I don't even know who you are. I was like, okay, post it and see what happens. He got up and left. Five seconds later, he tagged me in the video. Mm. Oh, but you don't know who I am. I hate that. Like, get that. the fuck out of here. Yeah, get, that's so annoying. Get the fuck out of here. It's like the, the bar went. Get the fuck out of here. It's like the same thing of like, <laughs> like when the guys would be like, hit on you when you're younger. We're like, oh, you're pretty. And then you were like, oh, no, thank you. Like, well, Stupid fuck bitch. You. You're ugly anyways. I don't watch Ugly you bitch. Like, it's the same thing. It's like, respect my privacy. Right. You, get, you know, you're out there with your friends. And that's why sometimes when you're with other like, with friends, like, they get the whole, oh, drinks for free. I'm like, nah, honey, I'll pay for it. Because you just invite in conversation that now he thinks that you're stuck with that person. Need that for drink. that drink and I'm like no I'm all right I'm okay I'm gonna take me staying over here and buying all of us a drink to not talk to him thank, thank you, you thank you now I, I, I have done that before and it actually but it pisses them off they get really like offended they get mad but it's not sometimes I feel like some guys just you just need to grow up like sometimes if being you know take it I mean it sucks to be rejected I like I don't like being rejected either that's why I don't put myself out there sometimes right. but at the same time too we know that you don't always gonna get what you like don't not gonna hear what you want to hear exactly and you get two things with that if they send you a drink you turn it down either they act like a complete asshole or they'll come back and try something else i was at katana with my one of my little cousins and it was just me and her she um we're from chicago so she was out visiting and, you know i was just taking her around showing her everything taking her everywhere nice like you know my little cousin, cousins and you know i like to you know try to show them the best of the best like if mm -hmm. the, if the, whatever man you're dealing with doesn't 
treat you like your cousin does then out of here like i don't never want them to to be excited by something shiny so we're gonna go to all the restaurants i'm gonna buy all the stuff i'm gonna take you shopping i'm gonna give you money and show you like this 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 is is the life this This is is standard like have something going on for yourself don't depend on guys for anything so we're having a nice dinner and guys um come over and well the waitress comes over these two gentlemen would like to sing you a drink she's like oh thank you i would like "Ah, nothing please tell them we're fine we're not thirsty so she was like okay so she goes back and then she comes back um he says that you're drinking wine he would like to send you a bottle i said no thank you and she comes back she was like okay he wants to know if you're serious i said please let him know that he's welcome to pay for this entire meal otherwise no thank you i have it covered yeah she's like you want me to tell him that yeah so he sends his cousin over to the table cousin's like so you mean to tell me that you said da, 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 and blah 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 i said you're the messenger go get the boss Mm -hmm. he was like like, you're not the one that said that it's obvious (laughs) go get the guy don't send tell him don't send a representative so the guy comes over he's this short little Jamaican guy with a big personality he's like mama what you say what 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 the the blood blood girl my Jamaican Jamaican accent's terrible so (laughs) and I'm just looking at him he was like so you you said you don't want my drink you don't want my bottle I pay for the whole table I said "Mm?" he was like he never had anybody waitress what's her tab pay for the whole table here here's a tip here i was like oh thank you we ended up exchanging numbers obviously and he became one of my very close friends Mm -hmm. you know so (laughs) and he got the standard the precedent the tone you know at the end of the day i do it 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 really is you know if you you knew you could pay for it if you wanted to but this was what you were offering and you know the same i had a conversation earlier and it was the same thing it was like if you don't want to accept it then move on there's someone else that will exactly. or won't, but I still could pay for what I'm going to do. And exactly. that's what the moral of the story is. Exactly. That. You know, I've been through enough to where like my standard is, is, is here and I refuse to lower it for anybody. So and if we're going to, if we're going to be friends or date or anything or be nothing at all, I want you to understand that this is where the bar is. I'm not bidding down for that. So if you have a problem with that, that's totally fine. Enjoy your day. Thank you for the offer. But you know, a certain type of man or a certain type of person is going to take that as a challenge. And then, you know, Hey, cool. Maybe we can go somewhere from there. Yeah. <laughs> to see how long it lasts. To see yeah. It fizzles out. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so that what part. is the best advice that you've gotten? Take fountain. Take fountain. <laughs> 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 life now, changer is this the same thing i should know about when, when i first moved to la um and i know that i know she didn't make this up uh, it's a it's an older deceased actress who said and i'm sorry i don't remember her name but um i was uh sitting with some um, actor friends that were more established than i was at the time and i was like what is the best advice that you can give me moving to hollywood because i lived in the middle of hollywood at the time and she said take fountain i was like what she was like don't take sunset don't take Santa Monica. <laughs> Don't take Hollywood Boulevard. Take Fountain Girl. And I was like, okay. And then I started taking Fountain. I was like, she was right. I'm on she something. was right. Because that trap. Private talk you here. I think I just learned something. I'm just going to always take Fountain. <laughs> Listen, in ho- when you're in Hollywood, take Fountain. Take Fountain. I like it. Well, I don't want everybody to know that. Then everybody will take Fountain. Fountain. <laughs> Um, you PSA, know, don't I, take it all the time just <laughs> when we're not driving. Keep um, I've got a lot of good advice, but at the end of the day, I don't really take unsolicited advice. I only take advice from people that have accomplished something that I want to accomplish um, or in an area that I'm trying to go or who have failed miserably and I don't want to do it like them. So, you know, advice, I think, is relative to the person. Like, you could tell me something. Like, I have people say, like, oh, I, I, um, make sure you do this and this. Which I, first of all, first of all, I'm grown. I didn't ask you for it. I don't, I don't know you. Take, take your opinion to your kids. I get, I, that's the one. Don't, sweetie. <laughs> you just don't like being told what to do because yeah. you're an adult and you can make your own decision and do yeah. what you want to do. But then uh, I feel like all a lot of unsolicited advice comes from lookers, looky loos. Okay. Like you're watching me in this yeah. position, then you think that you need to tell me, me some advice of, of how to how to maintain. Okay, my, I see. Like I'll have people. Oh, girl, you just tagged that girl and, and clapped back at her. You gave her all your power, girl. Don't stoop down on her level. No, you got bothered by that girl. Don't don't be replying to these people. That, first of all, I'm the clapback queen. Yeah. You you love me because of that, okay? So I don't give a rat's ass about her. I don't even think about her remember her. Every now and then, if I don't say too much online, my publicist will be like, okay, got to make some noise. Yeah. I'll pick a victim to clap back at yeah. for shits and giggles because it's entertaining for my fans. Oh, you're bu- girl. T- Listen, I'd have made millions of dollars being the clapback queen. How about you keep your? You're bothered. Yeah, 
I but forgot it's like, about but it. But it's like your realness and your truth. And right. they're, just, they're, you know, they're bothered by your life. Right. And that's the thing is, like, if you're worried and concerned that much, like, just shut up. That part. Like, just shut up. That part. <laughs> At the end of the day, you don't know. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're going to do my favorite part, which is Truth with Texas. Ooh. It's a little game. We're going to do four cards, four different questions, and we're going to mix them in. It's going to be spicy, naughty. Spicy. Uh, I love spicy. and naughty. Yeah, I think I said that. Romantic. That was the other one. I, Ooh. Yes. I need some <laughs> Don't we all? All right, so private talk. Are you ready to get a little bit more intimate with Miss Masika? Mm, most people can't say that. Mm-hmm. I will after feel. tonight. Mm. <laughs> all right, pick. Do I look at it? Yes, you do. Okay. Did I tell you what it is? Yes, ma'am. It's ace. Ace of hearts. That's the romance. See, you spoke it to existence. Ooh, and, means and ace is as high as you can go. Yeah. Come on, Lord. They're all aces. But you they're heard me, Jesus. Pieces. Oh, they're all so, aces. <laughs> do you think you consider yourself a romantic? Yes. What is the most romantic thing that you've done for a partner? That I have done. Hmm. I mean, I guess that's kind of hard to say for a man. Okay, so like, what is the what is the most romantic thing that somebody's done for you? Oh, we'll help you out. <laughs> um, girl, you know you have all these men doing all kinds of sweet things for you. You can pick one that was like the most over the top. You're like, damn. Okay. Um. Okay. The bar is here. I wouldn't say it's like the most over the top, but because it was just like so random and unexpected, um, just like a regular weekday, not like a special occasion. Um, I came home to like you know rose petals all over the floor, and leading up to you know the bed, and he had bought me these pink Chanel sheets, and there was a Birkin on the bed, and there was candles everywhere, and you know he had ordered dinner and the bath, and you know it wasn't that that it was just like oh no one's ever done this before. It was like you know you expect that on Valentine's Day or you know your birthday or something but it was appreciate yeah it was just like a random weekday and I'd been working so hard and it was like oh wow you appreciate me you know new just you know coming home like we're going to dinner and oh I bought your new outfit for dinner and you know just things like that are really really sweet now I've I've had some like extravagant over the top you know gifts and we're going on a date we're taking a helicopter to this place that place but like I think the the unexpected random things that you know a guy does just because he loves you, not because, like, it's a special occasion. To me, that's, like... I like that, because yeah. it's more thoughtful. It's thought out. Yeah. It's more, it's not, like, not... You don't have to do it, but you want to do it. Exactly. And I don't know if this would be considered, you know, romantic, but, you know, I had an ex mine that, you know, I bought him his favorite gun. Um, hey, I'm from Texas. That you know, that sounds romantic to me. You know, that he really, he really <laughs> wanted, and, you know, so... I mean, but you listened and you right. took the point and the time to like you know know what his favorite gun was, right? And then you're like, here you go, baby, I got a gun right. for you. And you really would have thought like I, you would have thought about him, Bentley. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, small tokens of people's affection, I think, is much more of a thing. Sometimes it doesn't have to be the biggest price tag. Sometimes it's just right yeah. Up. It, it, I like a good mix. Me too. Me too. <laughs> what is your favorite sexual uh, position? Ooh, you know. This, is, this is a trick question because it, it, it actually kind of depends on the person. Um, the I, person is you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> person with, like I had, I, I, I've had favorite positions for peop, different guys that I've for been different with. penis sizes. Well, it, it's not even, it's, it's the person. It's the. But why? Because it was like. Well, you know, you have a general, but then, like, different people move different ways, and the connection is different, and the... Okay, so what is your favorite position? In general. Yeah. In general... (sighs) Girl, there's not that many positions. Actually, there is. There's a whole Kama Sutra book, you know. I I, I would just say from the back. You like doggy. Yeah, because I feel like that's general. Like, that's general across the board. You don't like, so like you don't have quickie, to have a like quickie bent over or like it's a whole no no, 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 no. it needs to be like a whole, whole like thing. well we are going to I don't want to stay that way the whole time. You just want to start that way and well, finish? Well we don't have to I prefer to finish that way. Okay. See that's what now we're on to something. Yeah. We're prying it out. We're getting it. We're yeah. getting we're getting yeah. warmed up a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know? I yeah. Like it. I right. say it's a good finisher. A finisher. A good Back finisher. shots only. Not only. <laughs> Not only. But you know, it's a good finisher. Sharing is caring. We need to have all targets. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I'm not, don't like just one way me. 
don't one don't way do like that. position or yeah. one way just in general because some people get, they get like comfortable i like to mix it up i yeah. don't ever want it to be the same monotonous yeah. thing no. i want it to be like I'm not a- that i need acrobats but sometimes that's fun though too. right i don't but. need i don't need to be dominique dolls every day <laughs> but you're doing splits on the dick at one point in time listen it happens. It's gonna happen. <laughs> need, Did we just become best friends? I, I think so. <laughs> I need a variety of excitement. So, what do you would you say is your favorite move that you like? Your trick move in the bedroom. That's like your go-to finisher for like if you're want you know anything that involves a kegel. Mm. But that could be any position. And since I'm crazy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, did you, wait, did you just? Yes. Is there something happening? Yes, I did. <laughs> I sure did. Don't make me do it again. How did you feel about that? That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Next card. This is a spade. Ace of spades. It's a naughty question. Ooh. That one wasn't? Okay. Mm, you know, I think they all get a little naughty and spicy here. Right, you okay. Know? Hmm. Craziest place you've ever had sex? Mm. Oh, Lord. Um... <laughs> I was, um, oh God, I don't want to say because. <laughs> I was, I do it again. <laughs> well, no, it's not that. It's just like, I don't want the person to know, like, bitch. Um, so I was <laughs> younger and uh, I, was, I was visiting somebody. Okay. And um, I had company. Okay. But I didn't want to invite them in the house because it wasn't my house. So I was on the side of her house mm. in her nice, very um, <laughs> gated community. Nice. And there wasn't much privacy. And it was dark. Did you have, oh, okay, it was dark. So I was like, those are spectators? I mean, but, you know, there's spotlights and was, the was houses are pretty close together. Was you were done? It was like, people <laughs> were like, yeah, there you go, girl. So, I don't know if that would be considered like the weirdest, but it was just like a weird, a weird, like a crazy situation. Because again, like literally she was like already the only black person in the neighborhood, okay? Have you done things like that, like spontaneous wise, like on balconies, like things outside exhibitionist wise? I mean, to the side of the house that we were just talking about. That probably was my first outdoor experience. Um, I've had sex in that balcony in case you were wondering. Nice view. Yeah, it was. Nice view. (laughs) Um, I've definitely, you know, had more outdoor experiences. I think it's just great, like the thrill of it, because it's like you don't want to get caught, but it's the thrill of getting caught. Yeah. It's just hot. Um, I was in Cabo. And uh, we were staying at the Nobu, and, and they have, like, a private swim-up pools and stuff on mm. one side. But, like, you know, if you have it, the other people have it. Um, so, you know. That sounds dangerous. If you have it, the other people <laughs> well, have no, it. All, all the people at the bottom level have their, it. It's a private pool. I but know then, what you're talking about. But then the balconies above you don't have the pool. So, like, they can just look down. And I was like. So you definitely had sex in the pool and just gave them a show. I like it. Yeah. We're going to applaud <laughs> Give it up for a private talk. <laughs> Pool sex is fun. It was fun. Describe something that turned you on. Power. Mm, that's hot. I love powerful men. Mm. Ooh. I thought you were talking about yourself. Well, I mean, I'm powerful, but that's hot. I'm. 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 I'm You're attracted to powerful men. And in- attracted to powerful men that like are assertive and like just get shit done. Just you need a boss. Mm-hmm. Get it done. I feel like you're getting turned on thinking about it. I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what we like here at Private Talk. All right. It's a club. Ace of club is a kinky question, which we're all a little kinky. <laughs> mm, let's see. Favorite time to have sex? All the time. All the time. I like that. <laughs> mm, Literally. Do you have any fetishes? Um, I don't. You don't like feet. You don't like no hate um, feet. Don't like I don't don't put your feet anywhere near me. Touch me like I I, mm, I absolutely hate no feet. feet. No so that, feet. So that would be like a bedroom turn off. Like no. yes. Is there? Any- I like I like my feet being touched. Mm-hmm. Like all that. But like guy feet, men man feet. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of a lot of men that have pretty feet. I and even if you that. do, that's cute. Leave them there. Don't like don't rub your foot on me. <laughs> like like I, I've I've given my man a, a foot massage before, but like. You gotta wash your feet, put on clean socks, and I'm like. So you're one of those. You really. I have just. To I do have. Like, a, I hate man feet. Mm. Like it just makes women me, feet. I mean, I'm, women feet don't bother me. I just don't want you to touch me with your feet either. But, so but you like, don't want me to touch you with my feet. You know, I think I went past <laughs> on that. Just want to see how comfortable we're getting. You know, we could like, uh, you know, dap. We could like foot 
Foot, foot pump. Got it. <laughs> Touched it. <laughs> All right. Do you use toys while having intercourse? Um, I personally don't. I'm not opposed to it. Um, I have, you know, had my partner want to experiment with it a little bit. But um, I'm not a toy girl. Like, if you're into it, we can. Are you in, when you're doing it alone time? No. I like, I have something about, I just like a, a physical body, a man. So you don't masturbate by yourself? I literally can count on one hand the times I've done it. And I'm not going to lie to That's you. Crazy. I feel stupid. Like, I've, 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 I mean, I'm a I've, little offended for you. You know, and, 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 and I'm all for you for it if you if that's your thing power to you I it's just like I've literally tried to do it because I'm like okay this is normal but are you just too much in your head I think so because then I'll be looking around like I got to run errands I got it and it's just like I feel so like uh, then then I end up like feeling like a loser like okay this is lame so yeah I've not it's just never been my thing you're just gonna get fucked yeah, either, either. So how many times a day do you have sex if you're in a relationship? If I'm in a relationship, <laughs> two, three, four, five. Just, it What's just, the most? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Mm. Did you come every time? No. Mm, sad. But it was enjoyable every day. That's good. That's important. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> Last one, Ace of Diamonds. I looked like I didn't know what it was going to be. Spicy. It's all right. You know, you're just a little <laughs> flustered here. <laughs> Let's see. What's your most embarrassing sexual um, experience? For me or for him? For him. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's so bad. Well, it's only so bad because I don't want to tell the story because if this person hears. Hey, this is private talk. It's a private conversation. Yeah. I'm not saying names. Just say the story. I know. But it only between you and that person. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, because like... Ugh. Like, I am not a body shamer. Okay. I'm not into that. Like, I ha- like it, you can be in a relationship with somebody, and you break up, and then it's, like, it's childish and immature to, like, put that person down. you were with that person. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so there was this guy we were dating, like, for, like, six months. Um, and we, we never slept together during this time. But he was so sweet. He would buy me gifts. We would go out. He was super nice. Would you nice. do other things besides sex? Like, like we kissed and stuff like that, okay. but, but no, you know, nothing, no, no going down on each other, nothing, N- nothing okay. like, um, I met him like right after I had my daughter and, you know, just, I was super busy working and I'm very careful with who I bring around my daughter. So mm-hmm. I never let him come to my house and like, we would just go out and then, um, I don't sleep away from my child. Well, you know, now that she's older on occasions I do. So like, I'm not spending the night at your house and I'm, you're not coming in. My child's here. She sleeps in bed with me. So, you know, I, I really wasn't doing much um outside dating at that time so um maybe right before my daughter turned one um I, I, we, we went somewhere or whatever I spent the night at a hotel or something no I was sick and he came and brought me this care package and you know all the sweet stuff and like he put all these like elliptical like st- elliptical eucalyptus. eucalyptus I got you girl <laughs> peppermint like in the bath and you know basically like medicine was taking care of me and you know that was the first and last time we slept together. Um, and like I said, I was very attracted to him. He was very sweet. Um, oh God, I don't want to say it. It's so bad. Now you have to. The lead up is real. I'm like, I what know. did he do? He didn't, he didn't do anything. It was. Was his dick small? Did he not fuck good? Did he was a horrible kisser? Was he fat? I mean, I guess you can't say fat, I, I but was he chubby? It. I don't. This is. Did he so, have why like a little like this? gooch thing that over no, his before his it penis, just, and it's just weird when it touches you? It was, like what I, is it? Girl? I, it, I, it was this. The smallest. Oh man, that sucks. I've ever seen in my life. Mm. And were you like scared? I, I were you scared? I was you concerned. Even, were you scared because you couldn't? You, you couldn't fake it. That you were like, what I, am I like, do with like, this? no, like there, I, there was no faking. There was no like. I was just like deer in headlights. Like, like is it like that? Like, the, yeah, you were right the first time, and then I just kind of <laughs> like, I just kind of like played off like, oh, I'm still sick. What do you do with this? It was. I don't even, that's probably why he was so nice though you gotta make overcompensate for things you know what i mean because if you had a big dick dong over there you may not literally have gotten, you may not have lit, gotten that right care package but she would have been dicked down good and sick, that sickness sick, would have been sick, sick and dicked <laughs> um so you know i just kind of like played it off like oh you know i still don't feel good I, I i i can't breathe let's not do this but like after that i ghosted him completely completely and 
um, like he was calling me, blowing me up, like, well, yo, what the fuck? Like, what's going on? And and then, you know, my He's daughter- like, I fucked you good. And you're like, mm. <laughs> and then, you Sorry. know, my daughter's birthday was coming up. So I used the excuse. Oh, my family's in town and blah, blah. And then, you know, he knew my daughter's father was in town. So, oh, so you, you, you not talking to me because of him. He, uh, you're like, yeah, anything. You get away sure. With yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's exactly the reason. Um, but, you know, and I, I really like didn't answer any of his calls for like a year or so. And Did he still call you to this day? I'm we sure. ran to each other, um, <laughs> like, to and he asked me like, "Yo, whatever happened?" And I and like I wanted to tell him because he kept asking. But I was like, I, I, I just, so to this day, I never. Told I mean, him how why. do you say that in a respect? There was way. no way, you and it, it was. Really, it you was, know, you could just be like, "I don't think our sexual sexual." Uh, I can't even talk. <laughs> Obviously, I've never said this before. <laughs> our sexual chemistry just wasn't there for me, and I just needed a, something a little bit more. But then that opens things up to be he's like, "Well, let question. me." No, no, no. Then he'll be like, "Let me give me one more chance. Let me show you." And then he'll be like, "I don't want that thing anywhere near me." So it's, it's, it's like. <laughs> You know, you're walking. Right. It's a thin line. Right. And me, I'm, I'm very blunt. I'm very honest. So I'll either. That's t- why I am too. That's why I'm saying like. I, like I'll tell you me, the truth for nothing at I all. I would want. I would want to in my mind because I've been in situations like that. But not that identical, but to the point where it was just. Mine was really long and skinny like a wet noodle and it was just gross. Well, at least it was long. And it oh. was like, honestly, it was happening. I was like, just get off me. Just get off me. Right, like, I, can't I, take I it. couldn't do it can't because do it. it was not like, and we had been, we'd known each other for so long and it was so sad. But in that moment, I was like, I know I'll never see you again. Sorry. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> because it was like, if she doesn't like you, this can't like you and neither can this. I can't trick her. To I like literally you. thought this man was everything for six months. I mean, the, literally, why do you think the, we stay the, with men next, a little bit longer because we get dick, good dick? If you got a good dick, then I'll probably put up with your bullshit a little, a little bit, bit A little bit more. Until I'm like, God damn it, it's not going to change. Right. And then it's just over. Because good dick is, there's more good dick. But you get hypnotized, you get digmatized. And you know, when you don't have the digmatizing dick behind you, <laughs> you can't Ooh, come back. <laughs> no, like I'm not going to deal with any of your shit. Yeah, no, why should you? Mm-mm. You don't deserve that, girl. No. I'm all talking to you like it's already going to happen again. Like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank it was a you. pleasure getting to know you a little bit thank more. You. Thank you for coming on Private Talk. Please let us know where we can follow you, support any of your businesses. Yes. We can do that. Okay, well, the easiest thing is to go to my Instagram, and my link tree has all of my websites. My Instagram is at Masika Kalisha. You'll find my stock market tips from a bad bitch page, my car Barbie beauty page, all of my websites. And make sure you're following me on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, everything. And stay tuned for my um, music I'm dropping. I'm about to drop three singles, Ooh. back to back to back, with yeah. some visuals. We're getting ready for the summer quarantine. About to be over, period. I like it. I cannot (laughs) wait. All right, Private Talk, thanks for tuning in and make sure you go and support my girl. Thank you.